so now the candlestick pattern exercise now i think you get some information about japanese candlesticks you know the autonomy of each candlestick and the psychology behind its formation let's take the exercise to test your knowledge and see if you still remember all the candlestick we talked about look at the chart below and try to find the name of each candlestick number and the psychology behind its formation if you can easily identify these candlestick pattern and you understand why they are formed you are on the right path but if you still struggle to identify these pattern you will have to start learning about them again till you feel like you are you mastered them so here the first one is bullish harami this is bottom teaser bullish engulfing bullish engulfing bullish engulfing bullish engulfing bearish harami so if you so let's try to answer the question concerning the candlestick pattern on the chart above one bullish harami pattern the formation of formation of this candlestick pattern indicates in decision in the market in other word the market was consolidating during this session bullish teaser the market was trading up sellers tried to push the market low but the recreation of buyer was more powerful this pattern represents the battle between seller and buyer to take control of the market three engulfing bar sellers were engulfed by buyer this indicates that buyer are still willing to push the market higher fourth engulfing bar fifth same engulfing sixth engulfing means buyer are still willing willing to push the market higher seventh harami pattern this pattern shows us the market enters into a consolidation phase during this session so buyers and sellers are in an indecision period and no one knows who is going to be in control of the market let us take another exercise look at the chart below and try to figure out these candlestick patterns first is bullish engulfing bar second is hammer third is hammer which is larger body the smaller body baby harami pattern for engulfing bullish engulfing bar please i want you to open your chart and do this homework over and over again you will see that with spend time in practice you will be able to look at your chart and understand what the candlestick tell you about the market don't worry about how to enter and exit the market for the moment take your time and try to master the candlestick pattern discussed in the previous chapters in the next chapter i will arm you with techniques that will help you identify the best entry and exit points based on candlestick pattern in the combination with technical analysis trust me the price access strategy will turn you from a beginner trader who struggles to make money in the market into a profitable price action trader the second chapter the market structure one of the most important skill that you need as a trader is the ability to read the market structure it is a critical skill that will allow you to use the right price action strategy in the right market condition you are not going to trade all the markets the same way you need to study how the market move and how traders behave in the market the market structure is the study of the market behavior and if you can master this skill when you open your chart you will be able to answer these important questions what the crowds are doing who is in control of the market buyers or sellers what is the right time and place to enter or to exit the market and when you need to stay away through your price Action analysis. You will experience three types of market: trading market, ranging market, 
and choppy market. In this chapter, you will learn how to identify each market and how to trade it. First, trading market. Trading markets are simply characterized by a repeating pattern of higher highs and higher lows in an uptrending market and lower high and lower low in a downtrending market. See the example below. You can see higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. As you can see in the example above, the market is making series of higher highs and higher lows, which indicate that the market is uptrending. You don't need indicator to decide if it is a bullish or bearish. Just a visual observation of price action is quite enough to get an idea about the market trend. Look another example of the downtrend market. The example above shows a bearish market. As you can see, there are a series of high lows and lower lows, which indicate an obvious downtrend. Trending markets are easy to identify. Don't try to complicate your analysis. Use your brain and see what the market is doing. If it is doing series of higher highs and higher lows, it is simply an uptrend market. Conversely, if it is making series of lower highs and lower lows, it is obviously a downtrend market. According to statistics, trends are estimated to occur 30% of the time. So while they are in motion, you have got to know how to take advantage of time. To determine whether market is trending or not, you have to use bigger time frames such as four hours, the daily or the weekly time frame. Never try to use smaller time frame to determine the market structure. If you can identify a trending market, it will be easy for you to trade it. If it is a bullish market, you will look for a buying opportunity because you have to trade with the trend. And if the market is bearish, you have to look for a selling opportunity. But the question is, what is the right time to enter a trending market? The trending market are characterized by two important moves. The first move is called the impulsive move and the second one is called the retracement move. See the example below to understand what it is what I am talking about. As you can see, the market is making higher highs and higher lows, which indicates a bullish market. If you see this market, you will think of buying. But as you can see, the market is making two different moves. The first move is an impulsive move, and the second was second one is a pullback or a retracement move. Retracement move or pullback is also called corrective move. Professional traders understand how trading markets move. They always put, always buy at the beginning of an impulsive move and take profit at the end of it. This is the reason why the market makes an impulsive move in the direction of the trend and it traces before it makes another impulsive move. If you are aware of how trending market moves, you will know that the best price place to buy is at the beginning of an impulsive move. Traders who buy an uptrend market at the beginning of retracement move, they got caught by the professional trader and they don't understand why market hit their stop loss before moving in the predicted direction. See another example for a bearish trend. The illustration above shows a downtrend market. As you can see, the best trading decision is to sell the market at the beginning of impulsive move. If you try to sell in the retracement move, you will be trapped by the professional trader and you will lose your money. Now we know how to identify downtrend and uptrend and how to differentiate between an impulsive move and a retracement move. This is very important for you as a price action trader to know. But the most important question is how to identify the beginning of the impulsive move to enter the market in the right time with professional traders and avoid being traded by the retracement move. 
to predict the beginning of the impulsive move in a trending market you have to master the drawings you have to master drawing support and resistance level so what are support and resistance level and how to draw them out in our chart this is what we will see in the next chapter chapter 3 support and resistance levels support and resistance are proven areas where buyers and sellers find some of equilibrium they are more major turning points in the market support and resistance level are formed when price reverses and changes direction and price will often respect the support and resistance level in other words they tend to contain price movement until of course price break through them in a trending market support and resistance are formed from swing point in an uptrend the previous swing point act as a support level and in a downtrend the old swing point act as a resistance level see the example below the illustration above shows how the previous swing point act as a support level after the breakout when the market makes the retracement move it respect the previous swing point support level which will represent the beginning of another impulsive move as you can see when the market tests the previous swing point support level it goes up again by drawing a support level in an uptrend market you can predict when the next impulsive move will take place let's see another example of the downtrend swing point impulsive move swing point resistance level swing point resistance level impulsive move the illustration above shows us how the market respect resistance level when price approaches a previous swing point resistance level the market are in mark the market makes an impulsive move if you understand how price action act in a trade trending market you will predict with high accuracy when the next impulsive move will begin another way another way to catch the beginning of an impulsive move is by drawing trade lines this is another technical skill that you have to learn if you want to identify key linear support and resistance level let me explain you first what do trend line means quite often when the market is on the move making new swings high and low price will tend to respect a linear level which is identified as trend line bullish market will tend to create a linear support level and bearish market will form a linear resistance level to draw a quality trend line you need to find at least two minimum swing points to draw a quality trend line you will need to find at least two minimum swing points and simply connect them with each other the levels must be clear don't try to force a trend line don't use a smaller time frame to draw a trend line use always the four hours and daily time frame to find obvious trend lines we will try to focus directly now on how to draw them in a trending market our purpose is to identify the beginning of impulsive move in a trending market in the next chapter i will explain you in detail how to trade trend lines in combination with our price action trading setup see an example of how to draw trend lines in a downtrend market as you can see the market respected trend line and when price action approaches it the market reverses and continue in the same direction when the market moves this way the trend line helps us to anticipate the new impulsive move with the direction of the market look at another example of an uptrend market as you can see the market respects the trend line and by drawing it in the right way we can easily predict the next movement upward this is all what we can say about trending market i think it's clear and simple now what i want you to do is to open your chart and try to find trending market find previous swing point support and resistance and try to find trend line as well this exercise will help you understand how trending markets move 
and how to predict high prob probability entry in the market. The ranging market. Ranging markets are pretty straightforward. They are often called sideways market because their neutral nature makes them appear drift to the right horizontal. When the market makes a series of highs, higher highs and higher lows, we can say that the market is trending up. But when it stops making those consecutive peaks, we say that the market is ranging. The ranging market moves in a horizontal form where the buyer and seller just keep knocking price back and forth between the support and resistance level. See the example below. The chart above shows a ranging market and you can see the price is bouncing between horizontal line, horizontal support and resistance level. The difference between trending market and ranging market is that trending market tend to move by forming a pattern of higher highs and higher lows in case of uptrend and higher lows and lower lows in case of downtrend. But ranging market tend to move horizontal between key support and resistance level. You understand your understanding of difference between both market will help you better use the right price action strategy in the right market condition. Trade, trading ranging market is completely different from trading trending market because when the market is ranging, it creates equilibrium buyer and are equal to sellers and there is no one in control. This will generally continue until the range structure broke out and a trending condition start to recognize, to organize. The best buying and selling opportunity occurs at the key support and resistance level. There are three ways to trade ranging market. I'm not going in to go into detail, but what I want you to get here is the skill to look at your chart and decide whether the market is trending or ranging. In the next chapter, I will go into detail and I will give you the trading tactics and strategy that will that you will use to trade trending or ranging market. If you can't differentiate between ranging market and trading market, you will not know how to use these price action strategy. The first way to trade ranging market is by waiting for price to approach support or the first way to trade ranging market is by waiting for a price to approach support or resistance level. Then you can buy at key support level and sell at key resistance level. See the example below. You can see the market is moving urgently. In this case, the best buying opportunity occurs at the support level. And the best selling opportunity occurs at the resistance level. The second way of trading ranging market is by waiting for the breakout from either the support level or the resistance level when the market is ranging and no one knows what is going to happen. We don't know what is going, who is going to be in control of the market. That is why we have to pay attention to the boundaries. But when one of the players decides to take control of the market, we will see a breakout of the support and the risk or the resistance level. The breakout means the ranging period is over and the beginning of a new trend will take place. See the example below. As you can see, the market was trending between support and resistance level and suddenly the price broke out of the resistance level. This indicates that the beginning of a trend is likely to happen. So the best way to enter is after the breakout. It is important to remember that range boundaries are often overshot giving the illusion of breaking out is occurring. This can be very deceptive and it does trap a lot of traders who position into the breakout. The third way to trade ranging market is to wait for a bull pullback after the breakout of the support or the resistance level. The pullback is another chance to join the trend of for traders who didn't enter in the breakout. See the example below. As you can see in the chart above, the market was ranging. Price break out of the resistance level to indicate the end of the ranging period and the beginning of a new trend. After the breakout, the market comes back to retest the resistance level. That becomes support before it goes up. 
the pullback is your second chance to join the buyer if you miss the breakout but pullbacks don't always occur after every breakout when it occurs it represents a great opportunity with a good risk to reward ratio what you have to remember is that a ranging market moves horizontally between support and resistance level there are key levels that you have to focus on the breakout of the support or the resistance level indicates the ranging period is over so you have to make sure that the breakout is real to join the new trend safely if you miss the breakout wait for the pullback when it occurs don't hesitate to enter the market when you are trending ranging market always make sure that market is worth trading if you feel like you can't identify boundary support and resistance this is clear indication of choppy market a forex choppy market are those which have no clear direction when you open your chart and you find a lot of noise you can't even decide if the market is ranging or trading you have to know that you are watching a choppy market this type of markets can make you feel very emotional and doubt your trading strategy as it starts to drop in performance the best way to determine if a market is choppy is just by zooming out on a daily chart and taking in the bigger picture after some time after some training screen time and experience you will easily be able to identify if a market is ranging or it is a choppy market here is a good example of a choppy market that is not worth trading notice in the above chart the price action in the highlighted area is very choppy and it is making sideways in a very small tight range this is a sign of a choppy market that you should stay away from if a market is choppy in my opinion it is not worth trading if you try to trade it you will get you will give back your profit shortly after big wins because market often consolidate after making big moves